You're listening to the ADHD Support Talk Radio podcast. ADHD Support Talk is sponsored by addclasses.com. Visit www.addclasses.com to sign up for free webinars today. Well, hello. Welcome back to ADHD Support Talk Radio. I'm your co-host, Lynn Idris, and I'm a productivity and ADHD coach, so I help overwhelmed professionals reduce procrastination, improve time management, and get more done with less effort so that they have more time and more energy for what matters most to them. As you guys know, I'm a woman with ADHD myself, so I have been where so many of you guys are, and I've come out the other side, so to speak. So I've gone from living in that constant state of chaos and overwhelm and underperformance and underdelivering to a life of more success and fulfillment than I really dreamed it was possible at one time. And I really believe that you guys can share the same success yourselves. You can learn more about me and what I do at www.coachingadvantages.com. And if you'd like to join my next live online productivity workshop, you can simply text the keyword productivity to the number 33777 to find out about the next free event. Well, today I wanna talk about a really common theme I've been hearing a lot about in my coaching practice. At the time I'm recording this, it's October, and it's a super busy time of year for me. It always is every year. It's a super busy time of year for my business. So I'm talking to lots and lots of new and different people who are looking for help. And anytime I go through a period like this when I have a large influx of new inquiries and and when I'm, I'm talking to lots of new and different people, It always seems to me like themes arise, or maybe I just notice that the themes that arise, they're like common threads in my conversations, but with so many different and so many people from varying backgrounds. But one of the things I'm hearing an awful lot about from so many different people from all different walks of life and with all different kinds of challenges over the last few weeks or so has been the theme of broken promises. And I know many of you are probably struggling with this yourselves. Of course, we adults with ADHD tend to struggle with very similar kinds of challenges, right? Procrastination, um, disorganization, focus, poor time management, weak follow through, all of those kinds of typical adult ADHD challenges. But every single one of us, of course, these challenges show up a little differently in every single one of us. You know, I always say your ADHD is as unique as your thumbprint. But that notion of breaking promises constantly, consistently, so frequently is one of the things that really is pretty universal among our tribe. With our typical ADD challenges, with organization and follow through and time management and procrastination and focus and, you know, all of those pretty typical challenges, the the social implications can be significant, right? The, The work implications can be significant and the impact on our home lives and our relationships can be really significant. But one of the things that I think impacts us the most is, again, this sort of notion of broken promises. When we don't show up, in the way that we mean to, you know, we let people down, we let our friends down, we let our um, romantic partners down, we let our families down, we let our friends down, we let our bosses down, our coworkers, our neighbors, and we let ourselves down. So when we don't show up in the way that we're capable of, and when we don't show up in the way that we intend to consistently, there's a really pervasive feeling of disappointment and a pervasive feeling of broken promises. And one of the things that happens with this over time is that the cumulative effect on our self-image, on our belief in ourselves over time of all of these broken promises is one of the most detrimental parts of having ADHD, right? So when you don't show up in the way that you know you're capable of, when you don't show up in the way you mean to, in the way you really intend to, you're letting other people down, but you're also letting yourself down. And over time, again, this has like a, a cumulative effect. Over time, you stop trusting yourself. You stop believing in yourself. You really start to, to lose your belief in your ability to reach your potential. You lose your belief in your ability to change. You lose your belief in your ability to improve yourself. And your, your blame and shame, you know, that, that mindset piece that I'm always talking about, beating yourself up the negative way that you think about yourself and talk about yourself and the, you know, the way you consistently beat yourself up, that thing I call self-flagellation really exacerbates this. 
Okay, so anytime you beat yourself up for not showing up on time, anytime you beat yourself up for not following through or forgetting something, it it really makes it harder for you to overcome that behavior. And the thing that I always want my clients to remember is the things that you're struggling with are behavioral. They're not character flaws. They're not moral failings. They're behaviors. And they're things that you can learn to do differently. But when we sort of moralize them, when we internalize them as part of our character and in terms of our sort of moral fiber, it makes it really hard for us to really look at it objectively and to look at it from a problem solving perspective in any way that's going to be really helpful. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't take responsibility when we screw up, right? And I'm not saying that at all. So please don't, you know, don't hear that because that's not the case. We need to follow through, right? Consistently. We need to be who we say we are and we need to be who we really are deep down. That disconnect between how we show up and who we really are deep down is at the root of all of this, right? That that dissonance between what you really know to be true about yourself, who you are, what you value, how you intend to be, the kind of person you really are deep down, and what you're capable of, and the way you show up. When those things are not aligned, that's where we have a lot of the pain and a lot of the suffering that comes from ADHD. And that's what we really want to focus on. We want to focus on bringing that behavior in line with what we're capable of and in line with, with, you know, what we really intend. So when you find yourself, you know, falling short, which you will because you're human, when you find yourself, you know, being late, when you find yourself not following through or doing the things you say you intend to do consistently or you mean to do it consistently, going into blame and shame isn't going to help anything. Beating yourself up isn't going to help anything. Giving yourself 40 lashes isn't going to help anything. You have to take responsibility, but you have to look at it as a behavior, not as a character flaw. And that's a really hard thing for so many of us to do, right? It's a really hard thing to disconnect your performance, your behavior from who you are. But until you can do that, that blame and that shame and that self-flagellation is gonna keep you stuck. Because if you don't believe deep down that you can do better, if you don't believe deep down that you're capable of, of performing better in a consistent way, of showing up in the way that you really intend to, if you don't believe that you're capable of making change, then eventually you're gonna be right. I'm gonna say that again because I really want you guys to hear me. If you don't believe you can do better, if you don't believe you're capable of changing, then eventually you're gonna be right. So the first thing I want you to do the next time you screw up, and you will, again, you're human, right? We all screw up. We're not perfect by definition. But the next time you show up in a way that is not what you intend, that is not what you're capable of, I want you to take responsibility for it. I want you to own it. But at the same time, I want you to tell yourself, I'm working on it. I want you to think about the behaviors and the the things that you did that got you there, not about who you are as a person that got you there, but I want you to look at it from a behavioral perspective. Try to step back and analyze it. Do a little bit, you know, of what I call an autopsy on it. Look at the behaviors, tease them apart, think about the behaviors as not being part of you internally, right? But but things that you do. And that subtle shift in thinking about yourself and your performance in terms of your behavior rather than in terms of your character can make a world of difference in your ability to get to the bottom of those behaviors and really start to address them and make small changes that can make a huge difference for you over time. So again, the next time you break a promise to yourself or to someone else, I don't want you to say, you know, it's not my fault because Lynn said I shouldn't beat myself up. Absolutely, you need to own it, right? But at the same time, take responsibility for it and tell yourself, but I'm working on it. I screwed up, but I'm working on it. And then take a few minutes to think about, you know, what went wrong? What kinds of behaviors, what kinds of things did you do that made it make it made it come out that way, right? That gave you the outcome that you that you got, that you didn't want, that made you show up as someone 
different than who you really are and different than who you really meant to be. It sounds a little weird. It sounds a little woo woo. But seriously, guys, this is so important. Disconnecting and stepping back and making the difference between what you do and who you are is a really important part of getting to the bottom of these challenges. So something to think about. If you have any questions, if I can help you tease this apart, please feel free to join us in the ADHD Support Talk Radio community on Facebook. I'm always happy to answer questions there. You can also contact me through my website. But I really hope you guys will think about this and really hope you'll try to take a slightly different approach to your problematic behaviors and those kinds of things that you struggle with. Thanks for listening to the ADHD Support Talk Radio podcast. I hope I've given you something to chew on. Again, this is Lynn Idris. And as always, I appreciate your attention and I appreciate your time. Until next time, take care.